Hello, and welcome back to another section of Chapter 4. Today we're going to look at 4.6, which deals with graphs of other trig functions. So, to start out with, we're going to look at graphs of tangent functions. Now, the tangent function is what we call an odd function, because if we go to plug in a negative value, so if I go the tangent of a negative x, I'm going to get a negative tan x out. And if you have questions on this, we can prove it in class um, as well. Now, the graph of our tangent function is symmetrical with respect to the origin. And since tangent of x equals sine divided by cosine x, we know that the tangent is undefined when cosine x equals 0, which, if you recall, this really occurs at increments of pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. Or we could show that as pi over 2 plus n pi. So this right here will actually um, incorporate any value or any increment of a pi over 2. So now vertical asymptotes, again, are going to be the same thing. They cannot occur at increments of pi over 2 plus n pi. The period is going to be pi. Every pi units is going to repeat. And our range is going to be from negative infinity to a positive infinity. Or remember, that's the same thing as saying all real numbers because our y values don't, there is no limit to what we can have for y. So if we graph this on our calculator, first of all, please make sure you're in radian mode, of course. Um, you're going to see that you end up with a graph that looks like this, kind of like a little slight S shape to it. At every increment of pi, we have a x-intercept. So here's 0 pi, this would be a negative pi. And at our increments of pi's over 2's, we have these red dashed lines, which are vertical asymptotes, or when the denominator is equal to 0. Now, if we look at the generic formula for tangent, it looks very similar to section 4.5. Um, it says d plus a times the tangent of the quantity of bx minus c. We are going to get our vertical asymptotes by solving the equations bx minus c, and I'm going to set that equal to, we know that tangent is undefined at pi over 2 and negative, or increments of pi over 2. So if we're looking at a standard viewing window, let's go, we're going to set this equal to a negative pi over 2. And then I'm also going to look at bx minus c equals a positive pi over 2. And if you flip back, what that does is that will give you your vertical asymptotes on either side of the x equals 0. Our x-intercepts are actually going to be found by finding the midpoint of the two vertical asymptotes, or any two consecutive vertical asymptotes. So we'll say midpoint of consecutive vertical asymptotes. Now, these right here would be considered consecutive vertical asymptotes. So, in order to sketch a trig function, we want to start out by plotting our asymptotes, our x-intercepts, and then find a few points in between the, the asymptotes so we kind of have a, a point that we can make sure that we have a smooth connection. So, for example, 1, it says to sketch y equals the tangent of x divided by 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find my vertical asymptotes, and I'm going to do that by taking the x divided by 4 and setting it equal to a negative pi over 2, and when I solve for that, I end up with x equals, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4, 4 times a negative pi over 2 gives me a negative 2 pi, and likewise, I'm going to take that x divided by 4 and set it equal to a positive pi over 2, which then will give me x equals a positive 2 pi. So my two x-intercepts are at a negative 2 pi and a positive 2 pi. My x-intercept is going to come from the midpoint between negative 2 pi and a positive 2 pi. So that's going to be when x is equal to 0. And then if we pick another point in between 
um, are asymptotes. So actually, I'm going to set up a table here. If I have an x value in my tangent of pi over, I'm sorry, x over 4 value, I need to pick up, I'm going to start on a negative 2 pi. When I plug that in, I know I'm going to get something that's undefined because that's a vertical asymptote. Then I need to pick a point in between negative 2 pi and 0, which I'm going to pick a negative pi. Then I have 0, which is an x-intercept. I know I'm going to have my next vertical asymptote at 2 pi, so then I need to pick another point in between 0 and 2 pi, which I'm going to just pick pi. When I plug pi in, the tangent of a negative pi over 4 is a negative 1. Tangent of 0 is going to give me 0. Tangent at pi over 4 is a positive 1, and the tangent of 2 pi then, again, is undefined. So if I go to plot this, I'm going to start out by plotting my vertical asymptotes at a positive 2 pi and a negative 2 pi. I know I have an x-intercept at 0, 0, and then at a negative pi, I was down 1, so I'm going to make this negative 1, negative 2, and this here will be 1 and 2. And when I was at a positive pi, I was at a positive 1. So what I can come up with then is that I have a graph that's going to look something like this. My next example says to sketch y equals a negative 3 times a tangent of 2x. Again, I'm going to start out by looking at my vertical asymptotes. So in this case, I'm going to take 2x and set it equal to a negative pi over 2. And when I solve for x, this gives me a negative pi over 4. And when I do the same thing, I have 2x equals a positive pi over 2. I now know that x equals a positive pi over 4. My x-intercepts can be found by taking the average or finding the middle of a negative pi over 4 to a positive pi over 4. And in that case, it's x equals 0. And if I create a table then, I have my x value. I have my negative 3 times the tangent of 2x. And I'm going to start out at a negative pi over 4. I'm going to have to pick an intermediate point. Then I have 0. I need another intermediate point. And then I'm going to have my positive pi over 4. So something between a negative pi over 4 and 0 then will be a negative pi over 8, and then I'm going to use the same value of a positive pi over 8 over here. I know that this here is going to be undefined. When I plug a negative pi over 8 in, negative pi over 8 times 2, when I'm looking at plugging it into this equation, that gives me the tangent of a negative pi over 4, which is really a positive, or I'm sorry, a negative 1. Multiply that by a negative 3, and I get a positive 1. Tangent of 0 is going to give me, I'm sorry, tangent of 2 times 0, which is still 0. So tangent of 0 is going to give me 0 times a negative 3 is still 0. And if I plug in a positive pi over 8 this time, tangent of 2 times pi over 8 is going to be tangent of pi over 4, which is 1, times a negative 3 is going to give me a negative 3. And then I'm undefined again at pi over 4. So now if I go to graph this, I end up with my vertical asymptotes at a negative pi over 4 and a positive pi over 4. And if I plot my negative pi over 8, I get a positive 1. I have an intercept at 0, 0. And a positive pi over 8 is going to give me, I'm sorry, at a negative pi over 8, I should have had a positive, I'm sorry, yeah, positive 3 here. So, if I erase this out, which I can't do, um, we're going to ignore, let's plot this in blue here. So, at a negative pi over 8, I have 3, which is right here. I'm going to go down to 0, 0, 
and then at a positive pi over 8, I have a negative 3. So we'll see that we end up with something that kind of looks like this. Graphing cotangent functions is similar to graphing the tangent functions. Since cotangent is equal to cosine divided by sine, we're going to have a vertical asymptote whenever sine x equals 0. Uh, and if we use the generic formula, y equals d plus a times the cotangent of the quantity of bx minus c, we can find the two consecutive vertical asymptotes by setting bx minus c equal to 0 and bx minus c equal to pi. The period of cotangent is also pi. Our domain is going to be all real numbers except x is not going to be equal to any increments of pi and we're going to show that with pi n. Our range is all real numbers and our vertical asymptote is going to be x is equal to increments of pi n or n pi. So if we go ahead and sketch this out, our cotangent function is going to look like this. Now if you notice, it looks very similar to the tangent function, but it's kind of um, like reciproc era flipped. Our tangent function would have gone through like this, so it's kind of opposite. When we look at the graphs of other reciprocal functions, such as cosecant and secant, remember cosecant is really equal to the 1 divided by sine x, and secant is equal to 1 divided by cosine. Therefore, um, our functions then are going to be undefined when sine x equals 0 or cosine x equals 0. When we go to sketch these graphs, it's actually easier if we sketch the um, either cosine or sine function first, and I'll show you why here in just a second. The hills and the quote-unquote valleys are interchanged between the two functions. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these look like. With the cosecant function, this light gray line here is our actual sine function. So this is what we get when we graph that first. And then if you notice, our cosecant function is all these little black kind of U-shaped things. Now the valleys of our cosecant function actually intersect the hills of our sine function and the hills of our cosecant function are actually the valleys of our sine function. Same thing with a secant graph. If I start out by sketching the cosine function here, we have the same type of uh, phenomenon going on here, and this is where the valleys of our secant are the hills of our cosine, and the hills of our co cos or, I'm sorry, hills of our secant are the valleys of the cosine function. Another uh, type of trig function that we can look at are damped trig functions. Now, this is when we have a product of two functions, and we're going to actually use the properties of each function to graph it. So if we look at just an equation like y equals sine x times the quantity of sine x, x right here is called our damping factor. And the reason for this is if I were to sketch this, my sine function is actually going to bounce back and forth in between x and negative x. So if I have um, a graph, I'm really going to be looking at... So I'm going to go in and I'm going to sketch x. y equals x is something that kind of looks like this. I'll also need to go in and sketch y equals a negative x, which kind of looks like that. And then what we'll notice is our sine function then is going to, it's going to come in like this, and it's going to go back and forth. It's essentially going to be going bouncing back and forth in between the graph of y equals x and y equals a negative x. And you can do the same thing with something like um, y equals 
e to the negative x times sine x. And there's all sorts of things that you can do in front of, but just know that your sine function is going to be going back and forth in between your damping factor. And to kind of wrap everything up, uh, this is kind of a summary of the graphs that we've looked at here in the course of the last two sections. You can see that we have sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, and tangent and cotangent. If you have any questions on any of these, please don't hesitate to ask. So on that note, I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you in class.